Madam President and Dr. Shegabut, I'm delighted to welcome you both to Windsor Castle this evening at the beginning of your state visit to the United Kingdom. Prince Philip and I have fond memories of our own visits to India, and my family have been frequent guests of yours in recent years. Prince Andrew visits India regularly as an ambassador for British business, and Prince Edward has just been to Delhi for the Commonwealth Games Federation Assembly. The warmth and hospitality of the Indian people and the richness and diversity of India itself have been an inspiration to all of us. We hope to repay some of the kindness shown to us in India during your visit this week. But we are also mindful, Madam President, that in a month's time, India will mark the anniversary of the appalling terrorist attacks on Mumbai in which so many Indians were killed. I would like to pay tribute to the courage and steadfastness shown by the Indian security forces and people in the face of this great tragedy. Britain and India have a long shared history, which today is a source of great strength in building a new partnership fit for this new century. Nearly two million of our own citizens are tied by descent and enduring family links to India. They represent one of the United Kingdom's most dynamic and successful communities. And I am delighted to welcome many of the leaders of that community here this evening. Many of your own fellow citizens also live and work in the United Kingdom. They have enriched our society and continue to refresh and strengthen the bonds between our two countries. Five years ago, our two governments launched a new strategic partnership, which was founded on the sure knowledge that India's emergence on the world stage would be one of the main forces shaping the 21st century. One of the most important pillars of our new partnership is education. Madam President, I know of your own personal commitment to building a high quality education system at all levels in India. And I want to assure you that we remain deeply committed to working with you towards this important goal. The United Kingdom is proud to have more than 30,000 Indian students in our universities every year. The first group of Manmohan Singh scholars has just arrived to begin their studies at Cambridge University. In the future, we hope that many more British students will go to study in Indian universities, making this a genuinely two-way exchange of learning. Your visit this week will also celebrate the growing and dynamic economic relationship between our two countries. We look forward to the expansion of this in many spheres, from manufacturing to filmmaking, from joint research to the development of cutting edge green technologies. And also 2010 <coughs> will be a banner year for India as you host the next Commonwealth Games. I look forward to launching the Games Baton Relay with you from Buckingham Palace later this week. Madam President, relations between our two countries are built on strong and deep foundations and are set fair for the 21st century. I wish you and Dr. Shek Shekawat a very happy visit to this country. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please rise and drink a toast to President Patel and the Republic of India.
Your Majesty, Your Royal Highness, members of the royal family, ladies and gentlemen. May I first of, first of all take this opportunity to say how happy my delegation and I are to be in the United Kingdom, a country with which we have traditional ties of friendship and cooperation which we greatly value. My husband, I, and members of my delegation greatly appreciate the gracious hospitality that has been extended to us. I bring with me the good wishes from the government and the people of India. I am also deeply touched by the sentiments of goodwill which have been expressed both towards me and my country. Since my arrival in London, I have been struck by the energy and vitality of the city. London, in the truest sense, is a big, old, but dynamic city. It rep represents the microcosm of the <coughs> world, with people of different religions and races living together. It seems to be everyone's city, much like Delhi, the capital of India. The conclusion of a friendship arrangement between our two capital cities was thus natural. Your Majesty, the ties between India and UK are built upon the shared values and traditions. There are numerous commonalities between our two countries. We are vibrant democracies with a free press and active civil societies. We both believe in freedom, dignity, and respect for the individual. Our countries are forward-looking, adapting to the changes, challenges, and trying to shape the outcome of the 21st century. It is these shared experiences and objectives that have helped us to understand each other's vision and concerns leading to broad-based cooperation. Our two nations reached a new milestone when we upgraded our relationship to a strategic partnership in 2004. This symbolizes mutual trust and confidence in each other. It also signifies a desire to work together. Your Majesty, there is admiration and appreciation for the United Kingdom and its people in India. There is also a sense of familiarity and a friendly feeling even among those who have never visited this country. The support and encouragement we received from the UK in the aftermath of the Mumbai terror attacks, not only from the leadership, but also from the common public, from civil society and the media was most heartening. India and the UK are natural partners with an impressive array of complementarities. It is not surprising, therefore, that our two countries are now engaged in further strengthening our partnership in different areas, including trade and investment, science and technology, education, counterterrorism, culture, management of the global economy, and issues relating to climate change. Our business communities have confidence in doing business with each other. Bilateral trade is growing and currently stands at 12 billion pounds. While the UK is one of the India's most important trade and investment partner, India has become one of the largest investors in UK. These links are set to grow further. Cooperation in the formation and information and technology sector is another high point of our relationship. Other sectors tell the same story. Education linkages are expanding rapidly. There are more than 30,000 of our students in the UK. There is a realization that both India and the UK stand to gain through cooperation in the education sector. Your Majesty, the real strength of any relationship lies in the people-to-people -people context. The fact that almost a million people from our two countries travel annually for tourism and business purposes 
and that there are over 100 flights a week linking various cities in India and the UK forms a strong foundation to build on these contacts. The UK is host to more than one and a half million citizens of Indian origin, representing 2% of the population who, I am told, are contributing between 4 to 5% to the GDP here. They are also participating in the social and political life of the UK. The diaspora serves as a strong asset in the development of our relationship. We were delighted by the recent award of 2009 Nobel Prize for Chemistry to a scientist of Indian origin, Dr. Venkatraman Ram Krishnan, who is currently based at Cambridge University in the UK. Your Majesty, we are proud to be part of the Commonwealth. We celebrate its 60th anniversary this year. We know that it has an important role to play in shaping opinion on important regional and global issues. As member of the Commonwealth, India and the UK are working together to strengthen this unique institution. Your support to this institution is most valued. I wish the upcoming heads of government's meeting in Trinidad and Tobacco, Tobago all success. India is also hosting the Commonwealth Games in October 2010. Your Majesty, I take this opportunity to invite you to visit India on that occasion. A warm welcome awaits you. It will also give you an opportunity to see how much India has changed since your last visit in 1997. In conclusion, I would like to say that our bilateral relations have been for some time now perhaps better than they have been ever before. We are conscious of the need to continuously nurture it. As William Shakespeare said, and I quote, on such a full sea are we now afloat and we must take the current. Unquote. The time has come to look at the present and to realize the potential that future holds for both our countries in the fullest manner possible. Your Majesty, with these words, I now propose to raise a toast to the personal good health and happiness of Your Majesty the Queen and Your Royal Highness Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, and your family to the continued well-being and prosperity of our two friendly peoples, and to the ever-deepening friendship between our two countries. Long live the United Kingdom. Long live India. Thank you.